All right, so thank you everyone for who's here and everyone online for joining us today. This is our first spring semester 2023 graduate research series presentation. I'm Janet Holm, Assistant Dean for Collections and Digitization Strategies here in Alden Library, for Ohio University Libraries. Um, the University Libraries Graduate Research Series is a collaboration between the University Libraries and Graduate Student Senate to offer opportunities to graduate students to practice their presentation skills, discuss their research process, and explain how they use library resources. Each semester, students are invited to submit their research for consideration, and a panel of representatives from the libraries and GSS select one or two projects for their presentation. The selected students are also given a cash award. This afternoon's presenter, Hashem Pashtun, if I did okay, is a civil engineering doctoral candidate who earned his bachelor's of civil, civil engineering from Pune University. Hashem has already published several research papers and has filed a patent for a model of low cost groundwater recharge system. He has worked all over the globe and is fluent in seven languages, in addition to being a TEDx speaker. His expertise is in water management, community infrastructure, energy efficiency, carbon emissions control, and infrastructure planning. We're very lucky to have you here. Thank you. Hashem's research entitled Integrated Model for Infrastructure Planning Appalachia Community Grant Program focuses on the state of Ohio's $500 million Appalachia Community Grant Program. This program is designed to aid economic growth in Ohio's Appalachia Appalachian region through grants to improve infrastructure, workforce development, <coughs> and health care. Pashtun's study provides a rubric of analysis of Ohio's 32 Appalachian counties to assess economic, social, and political factors to inform project execution and determine the effectiveness of grant-funded projects. There'll be time for audience questions at the end of the presentation, and we'll be inviting questions from online folks through the chat, of course. So please welcome me, please join me in welcoming Hashim to the Graduate Research Series. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Forward. Uh, thank you so much, everyone. Um, uh, as introduced, and there's no need, I will get started. I will try to uh, make it um, as summary into the point as possible, because I know that the whole uh, research um, is pretty long, and I just want to make it as uh, specific and easy to understand as possible. And as I know that I'm glad that uh, I had the opportunity to do some research and contribute as much as possible for my time that I've lived in Athens, Ohio, and at Ohio University to this community to Appalachia for sure. Uh, so let's get started. I mean, um, as the the title suggests, um, we did some. We prepared a, a model, a rubric. Uh, which can help in the successful and effective execution of the Appalachia Community Grant Program. First of all, to get started, mm -hmm. okay. just just to give you some idea, Appalachia, which which is in different states, but this just high, highlights that what Appalachia is in in the kind of eastern, northeast, and southeast Ohio. Uh, mostly divided into four areas. It, it's bad based on the land development, uh, but I'm sure, like most of you, understand um, or knows about know about like, Appalachia. So I'll go to the facts that almost, as per the before COVID, that we had the recent uh, statistics, under two million population. This is only for Appalachia, Ohio. Um, we have half of the population density in the rest of, as compared to the rest of Ohio state, which is around 125 people per square mile compared to the almost 300. Uh, or 290 square uh, people per square mile. Uh, population decline because of urbanization. Uh, people are trying to shift from rural areas to urban areas, and most of the urban areas are, are uh, located in the non-Appalachian part of the state of Ohio. Uh, and that also has caused more, less development of the land, and especially effective development of the land, compared to the what we have statewide. Um, and 58% of the region is forest, so it's mostly green areas that needs more attention, more preservation, and also to be used effectively for tourism and other opportunities as well. 92% uh, of population identify as white compared to 81% statewide. So need for more diversity and inclusion. Uh, I would just more say diversity. Uh, and of course, education wise also, this is one of those areas which is very backward compared to what the numbers we have statewide. I'm trying to run to the facts as fast as possible because to kind of get to the problem statement. Economic problems as well. Uh, this is as for the 2020 uh, statistical data that we have almost 
20% decline or 16% um, decline compared to the median household income statewide. Uh, and uh, around 12.5% of Appalachians live below the poverty line. The worst is certainly Athens uh, County for sure, one of the economically distressed counties in Appalachia it itself. Um, um, access to clean drinking water. So these are some of the challenges that we have. Access to clean drinking water, access to health care, aging population, infrastructure is not up to the mark. Uh, broadband access, which was very crucial, especially during the COVID times, and Appalachia was one of those areas which was still having difficulties. Um, and of course, substance use disorder, health issues, and a workforce and labor participation rate is also very low compared to the, the numbers we have statewide, which can be shown here. Um, as you can see, I will try to put this thing to the left. You should just be able to move this. Actually. Yeah, it's OK, yeah, that's that. Thank you. Um, so this shows like this is literally as if you have marked Appalachia as, as with the like literally as the boundary of Appalachia, but this is the map of the workforce in the state. Um, and as you can see, these are the two lowest um, indicators, and most of them are in Appalachia. Uh, and the top five counties with, with the distressed economy are Adams, Athens, Meigs, Monroe, and Noble counties. Uh, so this was just to highlight of the need for such community grant program, especially which can contribute to the economic development, but most importantly, in the sustainable and effective investment of these funds. So what does this community grant does? It's almost 500 million project. The three areas, major three areas that they're investing is workforce development, uh, which is um, up upgrading and the capacity development of the human resources that we have, uh, training programs, education, and how to make sure that the workforce available in Appalachia is ready for higher income jobs, more contribution to the uh, wage uh, wages as well. Healthcare for sure, as we discussed in the challenges and infrastructure. Infrastructure can be from anything to some small community development, to development of highways, to other infrastructure which can help in the economic development of the Appalachia. One disclaimer that I'm passing today, so my mouth may get dry. So my apologies for that and as the month of Ramadan is going on. So what can be some of the potentials uh, that we have or the needs that um, Appalachia community grant can be focused on and can make out of Appalachia? We can invest in broadband, uh, connect Appalachia with the world. So most of the resources that we need for the workforce development, for the human rights development, can be more accessible to the people of Appalachia rather than their physical presence. COVID really proved that to us that most of the, the tasks is possible to be done remotely through a good broadband connection, tourism opportunities, as you can see, uh, we discussed also about the forest, about the water sources that we have, water bodies, that's a really thing. Access to clean water, um, that's another thing that, uh, that needs to be investment done in this area for sure. Um, career development, STEM technology, uh, at state of Ohio is make becoming major at, uh, attention for technology, as you can know, uh, as you know that Intel is investing in, in, in the Lincoln County, almost $20 billion of investment. That requires a lot of workforce to be to be hired. And if Appalachia can deliver at, or contribute or a portion of that, that'll be a great asset for Ohio and for the Appalachia as well. And of course, economic hubs and markets, if it is economic zone or something that can help boom the economy um, and stay the investment inside Appalachia rather than taking it outside. So when we are going to the investment plan, uh, the infrastructure planning um, and what has to be done when we are trying to choose what kind of projects has to be invested, how this $500 million to be invested, some of the factors that I was able to identify are these areas. Investment opportunities that we have to identify, for example, is anyone who's running the, the grant should identify where are the projects that, that you can find a private entity uh, any institute, any nonprofit, any company that can partner with you. So your investment is less than the whole project investment. You are just being a shareholder or just contributing to that. Any investment in the areas of workforce development, regional impact. Let me remind you, Ohio is on the crossroad of the United States and on North, North America, connecting Canada with Southern, like Southern United States and also East with the West. So regional impact is really uh, crucial and especially that Appalachia is one of those areas that connects east with the west. So anything that can uh, lead to the regional impact is very crucial for Appalachia and for investment. Community development infrastructure for social uh, development as well. Uh, environmental protection and sustainability is something that we need um, because of the assets that we have uh, that has to be preserved. And all the uh, pro project investment should be as 
sustainable uh, as possible. Economic development, as we saw the distressed economy in the uh, Appalachia, so any project that can boom the economy uh, or the economic development in the region, healthcare, social development, and education. So this is just to give you the idea of the rubric that how it got started, um, is that you can identify any two major uh, constraints that you need um, as your project identification. For example, in this one, I want to say any project that has higher impact and then how much need of the project is mentioned or do we have. These two areas will be defined in later slides, but then you decide every project if it is, say, from a development of a small road to a community center to a health clinic, and then you put them in this rubric based on how much it's impact on that specific area, county, region, and how much do we need it? Uh, and because let 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 me remind um, every the that the 32 counties are not same, the needs are not same, the potential is not same, the resources are not same. So that's why it, they are different. So we it's better if we go county by county rather than just painting all the 32 counties with one color. And that's why we need to get more specific. This is just an example. If I want to take the cost of the project as one of my constraints and impact. So developing a commercial mall will require, will require major cost and impact maybe not as much as if I want to develop a tech growth hub because this will lead to the social development, um, human resource development, workforce development, and impact will be higher. While the cost can be almost the same. Trail development, anything with tourism can have not have that much cost, but the impact will not be that much either compared to if I have a any workforce development center for uh, age population, for undergrads, making sure that they, we have more enrollment at the university level. Uh, something like that can have higher impact, but low cost. So you put these projects or the, 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 the essence of the project in such a rubric to identify where these projects are going to take me, what are the inputs, which is the cost, which is for attention, time, resources, and what is the output, if it is impact, if it is any revenue generation, if it is leading to any development, if it's economic, social, healthcare, and that's how you develop this rubric. I just, this is just an example. If I, have, if I have a matrix of, say, different counties, and I have projects, say, in economic development, healthcare, uh, infrastructure, education, workforce, then I can choose that which county needs the most in which project. So for example, again, it's an example that maybe I can identify that Athens needs more projects which can increase the economic development because it's one of the distressed economy in the 32 counties. And maybe maybe Athens doesn't have, a, the county doesn't have a access to better broadband connection. So that's a priority for me rather than education. For example, we're fortunate to have Ohio University and a good school district, for example. So we can say this is my lower priority area. These are my higher priority areas. So in this way, each county can identify their priorities and give it to the community grant program or vice versa. But the major objective is how can we identify our priorities based on some assessment, based on the needs, and based on the output of any project that we are choosing. This will give you a better idea. Imagine where I have five projects for any county, again, say, say Athens. I give scoring based on my need, based on the investment needed, based on the impact uh, for each project. So for example, imagine this yellow line is for a healthcare project. Certainly it will contribute a lot to the healthcare. It will have some impact in the social development area. It will have very minimal impact towards the environment and sustainability. Uh, it will certainly have a greater contribution towards infrastructure development, less contribution comparatively towards economic development, and some contribution towards the education workforce. So in this, then if I am someone who is on the panel, which chooses, who chooses the project or a group of people, and I'm saying that for my county, I need a project which is focused on healthcare, I will be looking in this area. Any project that's coming in this area, that's my priority. If I'm someone that I want to invest in education workforce, I'll be looking in this area. So these are the lines or metrics for different projects. I know my address, where I'm looking at, and then accordingly, I can choose a specific project. Out of the pool of, out of the pool of lots of proposals, that is easier to identify how can these project identification, prioritization can be executed. Now here where is, is, is very interesting is my past experience that I want to connect. This is another project executed in another part of the world in Pakistan. 
Pakistan is divided major, major in the four provinces or four states, and this is one of the states called Balochistan. Now, why I connect these? Um, almost same population, one of the economically backdrop states of, of Pakistan, with the high resources, if it is mineral, if it is oil and gas, and a strategic location, because this is the province that connects with Afghanistan, the sea, and Iran, and China is also wants to have, through Balochistan, to have access to this uh, Arabian Sea. Especially in the last 10, 15 years, this province is getting more attention from China as well. And that was the need that the European Union decided that we want to invest $40 million in this province for community development to increase. Now, these are the points that as if you would think that I'm defining Appalachia. Economic development, social development, and building the trust between the people of Balochistan and the government and making sure that they're not ignored. And then they can have access to more resources that they have if it is their geostrategic location, if it is their mineral resources, and to make sure the economic development is uh, on, on the path or on the road. So, I, so when I was working back home, um, I was part of the company or consultancy that we did. First of all, we did all the metrics and um, the rubric model to prioritize the projects for each county. Here it's called as districts. So they have nine districts, also known as counties, if I want to convert to the American level. Conceals is more on a kind of like in between counties if you have different towns or cities. Um, and these are the councils or community councils or uni union councils that they have, like community associations. Um, so what we did was we took the nine districts, we identified their priorities by certain statistical data and certain surveys that understanding that which district needs attention in which area. We gave that rubric to European Union and to the execution agency that this is these are the, uh, the priorities in different districts. Based on that, we moved back they awarded the projects to different implementing authorities. The implementation was done. Then we come back to the picture to monitor and assess the impact of these projects to the economic, social, um, and kind of a develop, economic development uh, and infrastructure development of those projects. So these are the major areas that brace um, that Balochistan Rural Development and Community Empowerment was the program. So what was the, the projects? Social mobilization, community investment fund, vocational training programs, health insurance or health care, income generation or something which can uh, generate revenue for that community, any project, and community physical infrastructure. They almost almost kind of uh, align with what Appalachia Community Grant Program is, is defining, which is health care, workforce development, and infrastructure. So these were just the results, outcomes, and impact. This is the theory of change for that project. And I want to make the same thing for Appalachia also, where we have results which will be just as a result of one project. Several projects will combine together toward the good one outcome, and several outcomes will combine together to a major impact. And that's how in long term and short term we can uh, identify and, and have key indicators of our progress. These are the five major areas based on what we were able to identify the impact of the project. And I'll go one by one. For example, efficiency. Was the fund managed and implemented wisely? Was it in time along with the work plan? Risk mit integration or mitigation? How was the planning for contingencies? Uh, efficiency in the disbursement of funds and impact analysis of contingencies for the uh, key indicators that we defined and how these funds were utilized e effectively. Level of participation, participation of women and other marginalized groups in deciding and in the implementation, and has that project created more opportunities for the development of women and other marginalized groups? This was one of the major priority in that uh, province as well. And then this is the impact of stakeholders' perception. How much was stakeholder involved, and how much were they supportive of these projects? Uh, how were they responsive? And the level of improvement in the socioeconomic profiles. So we also defined the ROIs for each project, the return on investment and the net present values of each project to see how much was this in, uh, contributing in the social or economic development of that county or that district. Um, sustainability aspects and also relevance. How much was the project in line, say, with the state agenda, with the national agenda, with the community agenda? Is this something that was completely alien or that was something that people really needed it? The surveys were done through different uh, formats. If it was key informant interviews, if it was uh, focus group discussions with communities, if it was household surveys, 
and if it was the visit of the, the, the people who are making the decision to the actual sites and see how the progress of the work is going on. So what were the expected results and what are the expected results from this program also? Relevance of the uh, community physical infrastructure to the needs of the local communities, especially women and other marginalized communities. And these immediate impact in the socioeconomic outcomes of these projects can be identified. How can we quantify this outcome is very important. Like we know that, OK, this project is, is, is useful, but if we can count, quantify, that will help us understand which project is more useful, which project is least, and to choose between them. One of the things that I want to highlight, the approach for project execution for this $500 million should not be project or proposal based. It should be priorities based. Not that someone is submitting a proposal, so I should select among the proposals. I should have my priorities set. And then accordingly, I can choose the project. It's not that because this company or this nonprofit have submitted a proposal, so it should be chosen or not. And of course, the community and the concerned government departments, their perceptions and their support to the outcome. Now, that's the slide that I want to make sure that how that commitment and cooperation is really needed. There are certain some of the organizations that that their coordination, their cooperation, their support and involvement is really needed. Um, and that that is very interesting thing that if it is this community program is executed successfully, this will be one of the very rare programs which covers all the 17 goals of the United Nations Sustainability Development Goals. I even looked in that and one of the goals which was like the life underwater and I was like, hmm, but we have lakes, we have the uh, Ohio River that also contributes to that. So that was the one thing that I was, but if it is executed successfully, Appalachia Community Grant Program can be one of those very rare programs which can cover all the 17 development goals of the United Nations. Um, so that's really uh, a hope, uh, a good news for us, but we need uh, it needs a great attention. So and that'll be really useful if this rubric or model can be used not only for the project identification selection, but also for the impact assessment post completion. Thank you and special th thanks to Aldo Library, not only for the references. Uh, it's worth to mention that my first connection with Appalachia was also to Aldo Library that I attended one of those programs in 2015. And then I understand that I'm living in Appalachia. <laughs> Appalachia is around me. So one thing that I want to say is uh, that any uh, institute, any uh, body can refer you to some resources, source resources, but Alden Library connected me with Appalachia. And I think that's the difference between another organization and Alden Library. It not only gives you as a reference, but also connects you. And that's why I chose this, this project for my uh, doctoral research as well. Thank you so much. Questions? I'm really excited about that, actually. I don't have any more online. We do have one comment sure. um, online, but no questions online just yet. Um, you, you may know this person. Um, I'm Nazria. Pasha. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, since I know little about the subject, but more about the speaker. Good luck, Pasha. <laughs> and it's quite an informative session. Thank so you. While we're waiting for other questions. Go ahead. So, uh, I think you've referred to it as a rubric. Mm -hmm. Model. Uh, it seemed like the uh, uh, very sort of rigorous approach with uh, like an optimization problem engineering. Mm -hmm. event. Exactly. I should be able to speak a bit more about the history of how the of the model in terms of why that one was selected. So this model is one of the most effective uh, approach, which has been proved in the past also. So the same model was also used in the Brace program, which was in Pakistan. So that was also easy for me because I worked on that to bring that model com considering the factors and variables and the constraints which are present in this project. Uh, based on some statistical data, some survey reports, I was able to, to kind of uh, paint those colors, as I said, for different counties and to identify that which county needs uh, attention in which areas. I can completely understand that there may be other types of models also, but there are two major challenges. One, how much that model has been effective in the past, especially with the same uh, factors or constraints that you have, is because it's a tailor-made, it's a customized thing. So how you want to make sure that the measurements are as similar as possible? Um, that was the major reason that I chose with this uh, this model, and as I, I agree, it's more an engineering approach for optimization of resources. I hope that answers your question also. 
Uh, we're all, did you, uh, was there like a, a lit review or something of alternative models? Or yeah, like? yeah. There are some certain models, especially like with project optimization, yeah. not with project. So there are two types of models that usually people use um, if, if execution of project. One is for project optimization, which means on site, how can you make sure that any project that's taking place, the time is constraints, the resource. The other is project selection or project prioritization. So imagine one is client and one is the implementing agency. Client use kind of this model to choose the projects. Right. The implementing agency will choose the next model for the project execution. Seems like you have another question also. Uh, <clears throat> no, I mean, the, uh, I, uh, uh, I guess the, it, I mean, it seems pretty evident to me, like the, if I were sitting down how to allocate if, uh, if I my grant money, this is how I do it too. Mm -hmm. I was just curious about the, uh, 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 about their, if the, the history of, of, of the, of, of the framework, I guess, but yeah. Yeah, there was some literature review uh, for that, like also for as a history or what has, what are the practices done, done in the past? Uh, if any, any program like that is there to for the community development uh, or for any grant for a regional development and how they have defined their priorities and how they have chosen the projects and the implementation has been done. But it's a, it's a learning process. I feel like with time you learn new constraints you and then you make sure that in the next projects these things are taken into consideration. Like one of the things is post project assessment is something comparatively new than pre project assessment because once the project is done, people just close the books. But now it's more trend that post project assessment is there to make sure what was done right, what was done wrong, what can be better, or even how can we build up on this done before and kind of a continue. Yeah. So can this rubric um, cope with, or is there no worry about like competition between the counties, right? Mm -hmm. Actually, so the competition can be. A uh, healthy competition or positive or, or God forbid negative, but that's what the hope is that um, you have to identify as someone who is a decision maker or a panel or a group. First of all, is the allocation of funds uniform? Why is it uniform? I mean, technically it should not be because of different populations different, uh, economic constraints are different. So again, it has to be fair and just. So if, 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 if fairness and justice is there, I'm sure the negative side of the competition can be avoided because you provide the rubric, you provide the statistics, why this county gets this, why this county gets this. So I feel this is more easier to define to the people to make sure that there was no biasness because it's more engineering a math mathematical system rather than just some people choosing some proposal. And that's why I said it should be based on priorities, not proposals submitted. And then I have a similar question like in terms of Intel, right, mm -hmm. being more in central Ohio, mm -hmm. but I can see how we can like feed into that. But how do we keep how do we keep like our ability to educate and prepare a workforce for tech work without losing those people from this area and becoming even that's even a very good that, that's a very good question because I do have an idea and I'm glad to record it because then I can I can have the patent for that idea <laughs> uh, for Appalachia like you know one of the things that Intel is coming mm -hmm. and as we mentioned before COVID has defined remote work imagine not only the people from Appalachia being uh, educated and prepared for that workforce imagine even the outsiders we are almost an hour away from, say, tomorrow's Intel company, like Drive. Imagine you develop a residential project here so they can have reside here. And also, I say, for example, a corporate building where they can even have office spaces. They can work here, they can live here, they can reside here, which will contribute to the economic development of Appalachia. So not only you can retain your own workforce, but you can also get more workforce because of your cost of living is much lower than the central Ohio counties. So that can be a good uh, boost for or attractive thing for bringing the people here rather than they staying in Licking County or Franklin County where the cost of living is higher. I mean, imagine an apartment here, say $801,000 compared to $2,000 in, 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 in Columbus. So if we really focus, if investment is done, and I know it's not part of this community grant program, but my point is the whole overall coordination or agenda or strategy can be defined where you not only retain your workforce, but you can also bring other workforce. Point number two, 
even if you prepare the workforce, which is going out because you cannot retain all the workforce, well, in some way, they are still connected with Appalachia. And that happens all across the globe where, um, I mean, look at India. They are preparing the workforce almost for the whole world, especially in the areas of IT, um, including America. They're coming, but they're still connected with India. Their families are there. Their roots are there. So I believe that, one, development of the workforce. Second, try as much as you can for retention. But third, even if they go out, they will be still connected if the infrastructure or the other factors are aligned in your region or your area. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thanks for your presentation. Uh, you. What um, what impact does the available resources have to the matrix, right? So mm -hmm. I'm thinking of a specific uh, example. Are you familiar with the Bailey's Trail System? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so the Bailey's Trail System was a recipient of this grant. Yeah. And but they couldn't get that grant if you didn't have one. The people who were driving the interests in that grant are willing to put up the the resources of their personal labor, you know, for for that, right? Mm -hmm. And then also you wouldn't be able to get that grant if you didn't actually have the Wayne National Forest as a resource support, to build yeah. the trails upon, mm -hmm. right? So look at your matrix. Your matrix kind of identified like what the need was in the area, mm -hmm. but it didn't identify like what does the area have to give back, give. you know, as a potential. For, yeah, as, as either collateral or mm -hmm. as 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 the the return on investment, right? So the return on investment is like we're going to take this resource and make it so it, it has a it's not just a forest just sitting there it's got mm -hmm. a bigger impact if you look at your other model your yeah, exactly. other your you know your your scale there mm -hmm. it's going to have a bigger impact right but so how does that how do the resources that are available in a community work into your matrix whereas so if someone was a decision holder mm -hmm. they would they would be able to use that exactly to, resources um are part of the is, uh, uh, part of the matrix in both ways so there are certain resources that needs preservation. There are certain resources that needs a kind of engagement. Uh, and there are certain resources that need completely avoidance. For example, post uh, mining locations, for example, where mining has been done, you want to avoid it as much as possible. Forests need preservation, but also engagement. For example, you have different lakes or water bodies. You want to, uh, for example, be engaged in the sense of if it is tourism, um, if it is, uh, for example, any other activity that can bring the people, but at the same time, you want to make sure it's preserved and not polluted. So, and uh, uh, fracking or like uh, coal mines, these all resources, then you can uh, kind of, uh, again, the scoring is required that if any project, say, is investing in coal mining, for example, it will have positive and negative impact. So you can score accordingly. But if someone is in, uh, investing, say, in fracking, same thing. But if someone is investing, say, in renewable energy, uh, that has more positive impact than the negative uh, side, especially on the returns side. So you want to give more scoring. So resources um, can have both aspects um, and the scoring is done accordingly that the positive negative impact and is that in the part of preservation, engagement or avoidance. Thank you. Any online questions? Okay. I mean, we, I'm still around, so we can still have a discussion if someone wants to have. So I'm a little bit curious if you talk a little bit more about the brace experience. Yeah. Uh, uh, you kind of have a couple slides in there, but if anything, any. No. Anything, if you if you had anything more, you would have would have fit in to the present or yeah. Uh, like I mean, there are lots of stories uh, with the brace because we were involved for more than a year. Uh, but um, two things for sure. One is uh, again, I think I can connect with uh, someone living in Appalachia. So I, from almost decades, I'm part of. I'm part of. I can kind of represent or talk about it. Is how much um, when someone from outside is coming, mm -hmm. this, these visits that I mentioned were very crucial for decision makers. Mm -hmm. I feel the same thing about uh, or believe about Appalachia. If someone is not has not lived in Appalachia or has not been to Appalachia, I think I want to say that they don't have the right. But I will kind of ask them to refrain from decision making. The stereotypes, the mentality matters a lot. Even I was having the same mentality for Balochistan before visiting. Uh, that, for example, I, I so uh, as an so I'm from Afghanistan. I have lived in Balochistan as a refugee because it's border with with Afghanistan, but I haven't been to the dist districts. I was living in the capital of the Balochistan, so it was more urban area, of course, not the districts. Visits to the community, hearing them out, really matters a lot for two reasons. One you understand the equation in a much better way 
but most importantly, the people feel the sense of that they are being heard, not that someone from outside is coming and making a decision for me. Maybe the decision is the same as what you are thinking in the community, but the best approach is if the decision comes takes place after a discussion rather than you just bringing an agenda from outside and giving to them that that's what's going to be well, that's what we're going to do. Um, and second, and most important is um, from my experiences with Brace is how people were like you will think that okay if it is social problems, economic problems, illiteracy, 37% of the state is illiterate. Uh, you will think that um, how much they will be kind of for, 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 uh, avoiding this this project or not receptive to, to that. They were really keen. They like I, we saw people leaving their day-to-day -day work job to make sure they attend the, the meeting. They contribute in the development or the implementation. Um, another thing was that also the project made sure that the people were also involved in the implementation of the project. If I'm say building this 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 library building in, in Athens County and people are involved in the implementation, they can do as a civil engineer I can say the operation and maintenance is the best way possible because they know how this building was constructed. But if it is done by someone outsider and then handed over, the operation maintenance will not be as effective as, as you can think of. So we, we made sure that the project implementation, level of participation, that's why it was one of the things, is very key that how much local people are, are involved in the decision making, in the implementation, and post uh, implementation of the project. If that th 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 these two things are there, the project is more efficient and more sustainable. Yeah. Sorry, I'm not no, no. So then how do you get the buy-in from the decision makers to have such a really a democratic sort of workflow on that, right? And to be using a matrix rather than them just picking and choosing what they want. I mean, that's the point. So the only thing is is the pro and con of this this matrix is not not it's not hundred percent mathematical model. Mm -hmm. Some human constraints is still involved. It can be a positive thing. Because there are certain constraints which are, I mean, if it is emotional background, if it is some other social thing, that cannot be 100% quantified. So that is useful. But on the other side, it can be a con because the mathematical model can maybe say something else, but you have your own biasedness, fair or unfair. Um, so I would say that it's just, again, how you use that tool. It's up to you. Uh, but it's just making sure that it's helping you to make a wise decision. But at the end of the day, some human being is signing off the project. Any other question? Okay. Okay. Thank you, Thank you so much. Yeah, Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you so much for your questions. I really like it. And, uh,